and go on with it up to on that bank. It's oh my goodness. It's exactly like my full. Exactly. It's right. Oh my goodness sakes. Give that man a raise or an ice cream or something. All right, six o'clock is called the meeting to order. Public comment is the first thing on the list. Uh, if you have a comment for the board, come to the podium, state your name and address, address your comments to the board and not to the audience, and limit your comments to three minutes. Anybody? That's me? Yep. All right, I'm Don Quigley. Oh, um, uh, okay. John Quigley, 75 Turtle Pond Road, and town moderator, and I just wanted to uh, have a conversation with the select board about our upcoming elections. We have an election season with the primary on September 13th and a uh, general election on uh, November the 8th, and uh, we're gearing up now uh, in the town to get all our workers in place and, and uh, organize the, the elections as we can. And so uh, one of the things, uh, a couple of things on my list I wanted to address. One was that uh, I would like to hold a public session uh, before the first election, uh, perhaps on August 31st, which is a Wednesday night. Uh, I invite uh, the members of the public to town, of the town to come in and talk about election integrity. Uh, the main focus of that is to uh, try to get ahead of some of the disinformation about how elections actually work. And uh, uh, this is something that's been recommended by the Secretary of State, and, uh, and I'd like to try it. Uh, you know, we have some confidence that maybe the right people won't show up to a public session like that, but we'd also, uh, uh, Linda Reinald had a good idea that maybe we would have a public session, film it, and uh, then put that out on uh, on some of the public me uh, popular media to uh, for people to take a look at if they want to, but uh, you know we have a lot of tools in place, integrity in place. Uh, I think if people knew how our elections actually worked um, and didn't guess or listen to everybody else about how they work, uh, that we would be much further ahead. So that's the goal of that, and we look for the support of this board uh, in that. Um, Second thing I wanted to address was um, we typically have a member of the board who uh, works with us on the setup for the elections, and uh, I call it the you know the sort of election preparation group. And so uh, Scott's done it in the past, and Katrin's done it in the past, and so I'm, I'm just looking for a designated person from the select board that would work with us on our uh, setup and preparation because it's uh, so many moving parts in the town, including. The select board and you know uh, law enforcement and uh, health and safety and all those things fit together uh, for our elections. The third thing I wanted to address: How am I going on time? Don't Three minutes up there. Oh, I talk faster. Uh, our poll workers. <laughs> ever since I came on board as uh, as um, moderator, our poll workers have been making I think what did we look up today nine dollars and sixty four cents an hour which is about six bucks less than they could do at Wendy's. Uh, I'd like to, uh, and I know we can't do that. Maybe we can do it for this election. The budget's already been set. I'm not sure how things are, I'm just not aware of how things are, budgets are all set up in a town, how they can work. But uh, I'd like to move toward, uh, and I'm not even talking about big money for these folks, maybe $15 an hour for, and I'm just, uh, one of the things that should be assessed is what other towns around us are doing. You probably assign somebody to look into that and see what other towns are, are doing. But uh, I think our uh, supervisors of the checklist are making eleven dollars and something or odd, odd an hour, and our poll workers. Eleven seventy nine. What's that again? Eleven seventy nine. Supervisors. <laughs> and our poll workers are nine sixty something. Nine sixty four. Yeah. So, uh, and these people are really important to us and. My, it is my, I'm aware that only about half of the people who uh, work with us at the polls actually even submit uh, a, a pay slip. 
because they're doing it as volunteers of the town and because they've always done it and all that good stuff. But uh, sure it would be nice if, uh, if we could uh, ramp things up just a little bit. So those are the things that I wanted to mention and I just wanted to uh, get the support of the board to move forward on some of these things at some point. I have a couple. If okay. You wait for just a minute. Um, you proposed fifteen dollars for the poll. Yeah, I'm just guessing at that, Scott. I, I I'm just I don't know what other towns are paying. That's okay. I just think nine dollars and sixty-four cents <coughs> is a bit of a slap upside the head for people who work that hard. To... But for the supervisor checklist, you're not proposing any amount for them, or are you proposing? The I, same I'm amount? not. I, I I think it would be a somebody should look at the whole slate of election workers including the supervisors okay. and look at something more reasonable for the future okay um, my other question is when you have this proposed meeting this kind of open house are you going to talk to them about the multiple ways they can participate in the election like mail-in ballots or any of that kind yeah of stuff so well? uh, the agenda that i'm having in my mind is uh starts out with sort of uh how absentee ballots are handled mm -hmm. and um uh, and then how ballots themselves are secured, mm -hmm. how they arrive at the town, how they're inventoried mm -hmm. the day of the election, and how they're actually counted out at the end of the day, mm -hmm. and so how that the ballots are controlled. Um, I think it's also important for people to understand how the, that little ballot counting machine that counts dots, mm -hmm. how that works, and how it's tested in advance. And so those are some of the things I put on the agenda for that meeting. Not so much, uh, here's how you can vote, but here's how elections work. Mm -hmm. And I think the information would trickle through about, mm -hmm. you know, how they can do it differently as well, so. And can you also update them in terms of who can vote and if you don't have any ID, how that pro process works? Yeah, that's the, other, the other piece is the, uh, the checklist. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, the supervisor of the checklist would have a role in this as well. Um, I think people are very curious how, uh, uh, the checklist is updated mm -hmm. and how it's officially uh, cemented in place before the elections and um, all that is is information I mean, it, was a, it was all surprising to me when I became moderator uh, how secure these things are and how mm -hmm. uh, um, how it's all how it works out and hopefully uh, so. they can cover the because I think the thing you're trying to nip in the bud is all these theories that are out there that you know yeah, dead people wrong. are voting yeah the other thing ballots are of, being dumped well yeah. also in terms of well joe smith is registered in lee but he's also registered in something maine yeah, he's voted so the, twice the control system for that yeah. Yeah. so i so, know that they can't yeah. do that but people think they can sure. do this hopefully sure. they can address those so those are the kind of those are some of the things that we're hoping to okay all right to to address so I, like i say we might get the right people we might well you let's uh, put it out there and <laughs> okay so are you rebecca you okay with this yeah, on the 31st idea. so you have the board support for the 31st um how about okay with any date that was just oh. one date he was possibly working on. oh i'm okay date? with the concept yeah yeah so we'll, so we'll put a sharper edge right. on it okay uh, and in terms of the, the request that you made, in terms of salaries, Andy, can we ask you to take a look at that? Sure. And I'll give you a little bit of preliminary information. I called some towns around us. Um, started with Durham, and they don't pay wages. Um, and they're all volunteer, and if you volunteer for a four-hour shift, you are provided breakfast, lunch, or dinner, uh, depending on the shift. Um, Newmarket pays $75 per shift for ballot clerks. They pay $150 per election to the supervisors of the checklist. Um, Epping, uh, another one I call, ballot clerks get $75 per election, um, regardless of whether they work a four hour, eight hour shift. That's just been a flat amount they've used. Uh, the supervisors get a flat amount of $650 a year, with the exception of the supervisor chair that gets $2,100 because the town clerk explained she does most of the work so but um and i hadn't heard from uh, three other towns before the, the meetings i had contacted but i can certainly put this together and get it to you and can you also take what dawn is proposing and see how much that will come back to our yep. and just make the assumption that the supervisor of the checklist would get the same as the ballot clerks okay. would that cause a problem with people they both 
do work, but. Yeah, I mean, the supervisors of checklists have a, you know, they have a year round responsibility for mm -hmm. uh, working on the, the checklist. You know, they meet several more times a year, and I don't know how all that would pan out, but. Uh, but they currently get paid for that time, though, right? $11.60 an hour, right? So the thought would be, if you can take a look at what they've been previously paid in previous budgets in terms of hours, figure out how much that additional amount might be. Yeah, I'd actually talk to Linda who has, uh, she's got some breakdowns for me of the hourly that people have put in in previous years for both you know, the heavy election year and the light election year. Yeah, and I, I don't know if it's an hourly rate is any more, makes any more sense than the, than the, you know, the day rate that other towns are doing. Uh, I just wanted to throw it on the table and, and you've got three this year, right? You've got a primary, a general election, and a town meeting, and... Well, that's, in this calendar year, we'll have three. Don't you have four, though? And uh, town meeting, deliberative, well, not town meeting, but the election in March, deliberative, general election, and then the primary. Right, those, that would be four if you count the deliberative session. That's not an election, but... Well, you still... Yeah, show up. Right, right. 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 So, there's still ballot clerks there. <laughs> yeah, people in. Right, correct. Right. 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 Right has been talking for a few years now and really went hard after it uh, in the last couple of months about putting irrigation on the sheep field, making it so they can play on it. Um, and they've gotten proposals. This is probably like the second proposal they've gotten. They've actually approached and gotten proposals to irrigate the Asway field too. So they want to move forward with this. I know that the ORA board's already voted on it and approved it. Um, the rec commission, I think, met last week and unanimously approved doing it. I don't see a problem with it. It's not really gonna add anything to, like, to us. I mean, I already currently pay to fertilize and, and do stuff on that field, so if they're gonna irrigate it and do it, they're not gonna take over that. $2,500 a year bill that I am doing. So it's not really any, any added cost to us, except maybe a little electricity. But they also split electricity, so it's not. Any questions for Steve? I don't. <clears throat> so this will hitch up to the current irrigation needs system? Yeah, you're going to have to run, <coughs> you're gonna take a ditch witch and run it from the well shed now and running all the way pretty much at the toe of that slope below the baseball field and running over. Okay. I'm okay with it. Yeah, I think it's all there. Anything else, Steve, or is that I have one other thing, but it has nothing to do with this. I kinda of dropped the ball and screwed up, so I'd like to ask. Alright. Um, well, let's finish this first. Yep. Yeah. So I move to approve the Oyster River Youth Association having irrigation installed in the sheep field at Little River Park, said project to be 100% funded by the Oyster River Youth Association. Is that a second? Second. Any discussion? Nope. Do all those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, motion passes. So the, do. Yeah, so the second thing I have is I get complaints fairly regularly about the tree at the triangle with the Christmas lights on it, and that they think it's ugly, they don't like it which it's there, so I haven't really done anything about it. But so um, a long time vet in town passed away this past year, Dr. Sokovich. His wife has asked if we could take that tree down, she would buy an actual Christmas tree and plant it in the ground there. It wouldn't grow as tall, it would be more full. And we would just have to put a plaque or something there that said it was in memory of him, but it would be an actual holiday tree. So how much would it be to take down that tree? Well, we could 
push it over a little over ourselves. Hopefully not onto the house that's right there. <coughs> it's not that big. <laughs> the big one's gone. The one that's there now is not that tall. It's How tall is it? 40 feet, I think. That one reached that house? Uh, <coughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. Are you okay with it? Yeah, I'm here. So, do we need to buy new lights to it? We need to buy new lights anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The, the lights that are on and aren't. I know we've had problems. We, we need to buy new lights anyway, so that's that has to happen no matter what we So how decide. big is this particular tree that she's proposing? It would be it's some kind of dwarf spruce, so it would actually only ever really grow to be 15 or 20 feet tall max. So we wouldn't have to keep adding lights to it as it grew. And we could actually set it back a little farther because when we took the real big one down that was there a few years ago, Eversource wanted to take that one down too because it's eventually going to get big enough where it has to come down because it's going to be interfere with the power lines so if we get a smaller one that can't that won't ever grow that big and move it back a little bit do we need to ask anybody about this conservation commission or anybody like that well i, I saw don here so i figured i'd ask now since he's the tree local tree expert what did Mr. Quigley say? I didn't ask. I was going to kind of put him on the spot right now. <coughs> well, let's call him up to the podium and see if he will give his two cents, if he's willing. <laughs> no, you're not willing? I was going to leave a minute ago. Well, you <laughs> should have. <laughs> should have Uh, Don Quigley, 75 Turtle Pond Road. Yeah, I'm happy to go take a look at the tree. Uh, it, it is an ugly specimen of a tree, and uh, uh, it, it's not certainly not healthy in that spot. You know, it's a tough spot for any tree, but if they're going to replace it, there ought to be a little research goes into, you know, uh, the tree that's going in there and make sure it's salt tolerant and other kinds of things. And so, uh, but uh, yeah, that that tree is it's going to wink out. In the next couple of years, I believe, because it's just not a healthy crown to it. So, would you be willing to work with Steve and the people that are Sackowitz. interested in donating? What? I'm sorry. Sackowitz, right? Sacco. Yeah. Sakovich. Sakovich, thank yes. you. Would you be willing to work with them and find? Yeah, I'm happy to take a look at it. Sure. Okay. And we'll do that when it's Steve has a chance to do it. Okay. All right. And you probably should leave now because. <laughs> 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 So, yeah, you can find out um, and work with somebody to figure out. I, I'm not averse to taking the old one down and putting up a new one, but Don brings up a point there's a lot of salt that's used there. So, yeah, there is. <laughs> I don't know if there's something we can do about that in terms of, uh, I don't know. So, no. I'm not the tree expert. You have one now on the yeah. retainer. So, well, thank you. Right. Are you going to hang around for a little bit? Or? I wasn't planning on it, but I can. All right, how about how about if we do the lamprey thing at the moment? Oh, what um, happened? Yeah, so... Um, <coughs> price increases for uh, Price increases. So we've been notified by Waste Management. We have a, a long-term agreement with them for... Yeah, Stone. we still got like four more years or something left of it. Yeah, but they've noticed in the contract that um, the host community is charging them some fees and they haven't been charging them to us so we are going to get hit with a fee increase of about two dollars and 85 cents a ton um, which is going to go up even next year up to three probably another three dollars and 85 cents so it's going to up another dollar um, so I just wanted you to be aware of it we're getting more information about it uh, and we're proposing, they want to do it now, and we're proposing, the Lamprey Cooperative is proposing that it starts October 1. So I will get you more information about it, um, and we'll see if they accept that. They might push back, but that's going to mean more money. It's a lot. to come out of your budget. A so, lot more money. So when I get you more information at some point, get back to us and let us know how much that is so we can plan for that in the budget. So. Yeah, that's a lot more money. Yeah, I know. Not a significant amount. Or not the a other significant thing, amount. You know, the other thing they're looking at, I think we've got, what is it, four more years? I think something like that. They're going to see if they can do a renegotiation to extend that even further. Now that they want to, you know, charge us more, even more money. Um, so 
that's something that they'll get in as well. So instead of it being four, extend it even further. And what? They're still pretty cheap compared to a yes. lot of towns around. I know Durham pays ten more dollars a ton right now than we currently pay. So, so just I wanted you to be aware of it, um, and I wanted the other board member to be aware of it as well. So that's going to be a financial impact on your budget. So, yeah, it is. So, but I'll send you more information. All right. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Joe Bassett, welcome. <clears throat> Before I ask for my request, um, just so you know, Steve and I have talked earlier. When whatever you decide to do with the Christmas tree, we have offered our bucket truck to whatever you need to do with the Christmas one. So we used it already before. Yeah. So whatever you need, we'll, we're more than happy to help the town out for that type of stuff. Thank you. Um, as you see on our request, we would like to add fireworks to our September 11th show. Um, this is a show Norm the Third and I started in 2019, but because of COVID and the last year tire shortages, we had to cancel it. Um, sponsors have come back on board um, for this show, and they'd like to add the fireworks back to it. Um, so I told them that the way our schedule works, I could not just unilaterally add that without coming back and asking the board for permission to be able to do that. 11th is a Friday. It is Sunday. Oh, it's a Our plan is to do the show starting a twilight show, so we'd be able to finish the show between 8 and 8.30 and do the fireworks between 8 and 8.30. So it would be done at a relatively reasonable hour. Okay. And how long is the show? Um, the race show itself will probably be about three and a half hours. You don't need the fireworks show. The fireworks show is about 20 minutes. Okay. Any questions? Are you all set? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, I move to approve adding fireworks to the <coughs> geez, to the September 11th, 2022 race date slash celebratory event at the Lee USA Speedway. Do I have a second? Second. <coughs> Any discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. And thank you for the use of the truck, too. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. Anything we can do to help the town. Okay. Uh, Christopher Hollis. Mm -hmm. Hi, how are you doing? So my name is uh, Chris Heiler. I work for the uh, Municipal Technology Advisory Committee. Um, so a little bit about myself. Uh, I did eight years active duty with the Navy as an information systems technician. I am with the Navy Reserve right now. Um, I did four years when I was active duty at the Navy Cyber Defense Operations Command. So a lot of my kind of technical expertise is really on the security side of things, uh, which you know, municipalities really struggle with. And, you know, that's not a uh, unique thing for, you know, around here or, you know, just this town, it's it's everywhere. So, uh, when I saw that uh, yeah, Denise posted something, or my wife showed me, she posted something on Facebook about getting involved, uh, I figured it'd be a really good thing to, to get involved with, so. Excellent. Yep, um, you know, I'd really like to have a chance to, you know, look through the security of the network, and, you know, help make sure things are, uh, uh, looking good and you know, resilient. So, um, but yeah, any questions you may have for me? Do you have any questions? I, I don't. Sounds, you sound fantastic. <laughs> Thanks. And who else is presently Dean Rubai? So it's just two so far. third one that applied or no? We've had some folks who've called to question yeah. and think about applying and that have not. I've sent them a few applications. Okay. Denise has probably not like a couple of people in the lobby as well. Okay. She felt were appropriate. Okay. okay. Hopefully we can get some other people too. Because the, the hope is for this particular group to advise us in terms of all those particular IT related th things. You know, cyber security is very important these days, but also just the mundane stuff in terms of replacing systems and yes. that kind of stuff, all those technology questions. So. Thank you very much for stepping forward. Absolutely. Thank your wife, too. <laughs> She's the one that's strong on you or just whoever. Yeah. All right. Uh, I move to approve a three year, three year appointment for Christopher Haller as the member of the Lee, the Lee Municipal Technology Advisory Committee. This does not sound awful. Do have a second? Second. Any discussion? No. I'm called the MTAC. MTAC. 
right? Yeah, that's what I was planning on calling it. <laughs> Instead of municipal technology advisory. Yeah. So motion passes. So welcome. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I get the dean's contact info? I uh, yes. Um, I think I've got your some of your contact information. I can get that to you Works the next day or so. Excellent. Great. Do you have a thing for him to sign? I brought a copy, but if you have an official one, I do not have official. an official one. Appointment form. Oh, that shouldn't. Yeah. Um, if you go to the clerk's office, All right. you can get sworn in. Um, but we have to sign this. Oh yeah. You can, oh, but do you one have on the back one? of that? But do you have one? I, I didn't bring one this evening. I don't believe we have a prepared signature page. Yes, we do. Okay. Never mind. I was like, yeah, I do. Why is it on the back of that piece of paper? <laughs> so, um, one there will be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yep. So if we go and get sworn in. Perfect. And why are you doing something? No, it just takes two. Just get it right. So now you're official. All right. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, my agenda says assistant town administrator. So, <laughs> so does mine. Yeah. I downloaded it earlier for the introduction. Happy Andy, please. Give Denise my cheat sheet. But, um, yeah, I had a few things. Um, a couple of things that I wanted to talk about and some questions that you would ask me at the last meeting. Um, first uh, area of concern was the capital improvement program. Um, we still need a planning board member and one more resident at large and somebody from the select board member that wants to be the select board member. Um, right now we have a resident at large and a budget committee member um, who have agreed to be on the committee. Um, but I, I think it's important that we didn't one of us already sign up for that? Yeah, I feel like we need to beat that up, but I don't remember who it was. Wasn't me. Yeah, I'll go back to <laughs> I'll go back through the minutes then and, and figure out who volunteered as a select board member. But uh, the, the most important member that we need is a planning board member. The actual statute that was used to, for the warrant article, warrant article language requires that you have a planning board member. On. So I assume you've contacted them. I have, and Karen has brought it up at at least two meetings and no one has stepped forward at this point. So, maybe we can send in Denise to strong arm somebody, because that seems to work pretty good for us, <laughs> for other things. I don't know, so ha have you actually had a conversation with Bob Smith? I have not, and I believe at this point Bob has left town. Yeah, he's in. He sold his house in July. Oh, really? so who's the chair now? Um, they I do know. No, there's. Um, they canceled one meeting. I don't know. No, I. Um, is it Mark? Mark. I'm not going. To this. I'll Mark. be able to figure it out. Oh yeah, Hold you on. should know. I know, and I do know, and I can picture him. But I'm not great with names. I know, right? Um, <laughs> you can draw your pictures. That helps. I can track there down. There is a chair. I can yeah, track down the so chair. Chair. I would suggest, <laughs> so if you would, please. Contact the chair and say statutorily we need somebody from your particular planning board group to serve. Who is that going to be? Yep. Uh, and give them a deadline. Those people need to start their stuff. And that was my next thought. If they're going to prepare information to advise the budget committee, uh, you want to have them start yeah. hold their first meeting in September as soon as possible. Okay. So, did you have a question? Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, it's Mark Bullivo. Oh, okay. Okay. I know him. <laughs> so Bob Smith moved? How dare he move? He yeah. put his house on the market and had an offer within about 23 hours. And 23 hours? Oh, that's, that's kind of long. That's nice. All right. Well, and let us know if that doesn't happen. Because they need to appoint somebody. Yeah, that happens to be. So. Um, the next item I had was uh, planning for the finance officer. Uh, Joanne Clancy has been <coughs> clear that she intends to retire in December. Um, December will be here almost immediately. I have been uh, watching some of the uh, employment searches for finance officers in other towns. Um, they are not necessarily being filled quickly and they are not necessarily being filled uh, 
for the amount of uh, money that we have budgeted uh, for a finance officer. Um, one of the uh, things that I am familiar with um, in uh, town I live in, we reached out to MRI. We, we reached out to two or three places. MRI um, gave us the best option for contracted financial services and hired a bookkeeper who functions uh, as the bookkeeper and an accounting assistant. The, um, the contracted service comes in uh, two to two and a half days a week. Um, the, the person that I'm familiar with has about 30 years of experience and is a CPA, um, handles things uh, very well, um, very quickly, and I, I haven't uh, brought that proposal to you formally at this point, but I wanted to present both options uh, in the event that, and I want to be ready uh, in the event that um, we decide either not to replace the finance officer with a full-time finance officer or we just can't find a finance officer. Um, and I think that's a fair likelihood, particularly given the salary range that those people are looking for at this time. So, would, so I guess, my questions would be, walk us through the two different scenarios. So, um, first scenario would be that we advertise for a finance officer to replace our present finance officer when she retires. 40-hour um, week position, um, you know, continue very much in the same vein that we have. Um, How about the assistant? Because it's my understanding that that person is going away. That, that person is very much hoping to uh, enter the election and become town clerk. So um, we would be looking at hiring a finance officer and a new assistant. Um, okay. The second option would be to use a contracted service uh, to immediately take over, step in to take over the finance officer's position. In my experience, the contracted service uh, typically requires about half the time that the full-time finance officer did um, and then you'd still need a bookkeeper you would need a bookkeeper or an accounting assistant or s somebody uh, there on a day-to-day -day basis to handle financial questions that arose and write checks that sort of thing so layout <coughs> proposal number one what we pay our finance officer and what people are getting paid out there what's the differential I would say it's about twenty thousand dollars okay. uh, Fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. We are in the sixty to low sixties. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't seen any advertisements close to that, and the advertisements that are considerably above that are not being filled quickly. And the difference between the part-time person. Uh, to my my experience, and I included the the rates from. Um, Deerfield in their town of similar size that went to this proposal uh, a few years ago. Um, and that uh, they started out fairly light, past year was heavy, they apparently had some uh, extra financial work that required some detailed uh, examination by the contracted person and they spent $33,000, but it, that's the highest it's been in the last five years. Um, so that's the person from MRI, but what about the person, their half-time person? They don't have a half-time person. They actually have a bookkeeper um, who works full-time, uh, handles uh, a fair amount of the HR uh, responsibility as well. And I don't know that uh, we would necessarily need that. I think that position uh, in Deerfield is uh, mid-50s. It's around $55,000 a year. I guess, I guess I'm asking the wrong question. So the first scenario where you hire another finance officer and that part-time person, Mm -hmm. what we're paying that part-time person now versus what we would have to pay a new part-time person. Is there, what's that different to? That I'm not sure. And I've actually had uh, contract, contact with at least one uh, resident who would be interested in a part-time position and has significant um, financial background oh. and bookkeeping background. Is that the person that came to visit you last week? A uh, couple of weeks ago, okay. I think. Yeah. All right. All right. I sent them to you. Good, thank you. <laughs> and she immediately uh, declined any interest in being a finance officer. Yeah, yeah, that was my understanding as well. All right. But, um, and I will have some more concrete proposals coming forward, but I just wanted to alert the board that I don't think this is going to be particularly easy for us to just advertise for finance officer and assistant and have this all taken care of by the end of October.
Can you give us, in terms of your feelings, if we go with route number one, would you propose to do some overlap between the two? Yeah, I think you could certainly. And I think if I went with route number one, I might uh, see if I could hire somebody who felt that they could handle a position without an assistant. Um, okay. I think that would be the first thing that would come to my mind in that position. Okay. Do you have any other questions? I don't. No. All right. If, uh, I guess, well, are you about to get to the technology portion of this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, the next thing I had up, and this is very much here in part because of the changes I see coming in finance. Um, I have mentioned uh, beforehand, as have other people, that uh, the current financial software we have, Tyler ERP, um, is extremely difficult to work with. Um, there's nothing intuitive about it, and it's also, uh, it's not created specifically for municipalities. It's created for, uh, as near as I can tell, for large educational institutions. Um, every patch that they send, every instruction that they send, all has to do with uh, your university accounting, your uh, school system, supervisory union accounting. Um, if you ask them, uh, why, why aren't you more municipal centered? They'll tell you they are, although in the past year they changed their name to reflect just schools as opposed to municipalities. Um, there's a couple or three or four um, reasonable uh, software programs that are much more intuitive. They're much more designed specifically for municipalities. Um, one in particular is MRI's uh, sort of adopted uh, program, which is uh, the MTS software package. Uh, it's specific, they create a town format specific to New Hampshire finance, uh, specific to DRA forms, deadlines, uh, what you need to supply the state. Um, very uh, easy to use budgeting software, Windows based. Uh, you don't have to subnet mask uh, nine different lines to make simple changes. Um, the cost to implement and switch over the complete program, which I don't know that we need the complete program, uh, is about the same or a little less than Tyler was in 2014 when you brought it on. Um, I think Tyler was $56,593 um, the first year to implement. Um, the other thing that I was really impressed about with the MTS software was that it offers online timesheets. Um, Right now, if you're not familiar with our payroll process, department heads show up with a handful of paper and uh, after they've sorted it out and give it to Joanne and Liz uh, to sort out further. And um, I think at this point, most of the world is on online timesheets. Um, I think there's some real benefit to doing that. And uh, those were some of the reasons uh, that I was interested in looking at a different software proposal. But obviously, the other reason was that uh, it seemed to me there might be some ARPA funding available that could be used for this. Um, and if it's not something that uh, could be done immediately, I will keep banging the drum <laughs> for a little while. But uh, just with the uh, shift that we're having um, in finance, you know, coming within a few months, it, it seemed uh, like an opportune time to me to uh, implement payroll changes and implement just an easier, more intuitive uh, finance software. So can you speak to on um, third page, the little the sheet? Okay. In the uh, middle between those two boxes on the left, it says enhanced payroll, online timesheets, portal, etc. Yep. Four dollars PE slash PM like that. I believe that is a per employee, uh, that was per employee per month was my understanding. So we've got 20 some odd, let's say there's 25, so that's $100 extra per month. Yeah, and that would be if you want to give every employee access to an electronic time card. Um, that's above and beyond department heads having the ability to do electronic um, time cards. But if you didn't, then they still have to fill out some kind of paper. The employees would have to give paper uh, to their department heads. 
Like the department heads could submit. Like we're kind of like doing it half halfway. I, I would uh, certainly prefer to go full online. Do all of our staff they all have access to computer, right? Mm -hmm. No. Well, all our staff doesn't have their own computer. Well, I understand that. There's certainly that. access to. Um, the hardest part would certainly be DPW, mm -hmm. um, and probably the trans the transfer station has multiple computers, but I don't. Okay. Please yeah, the employee. If you use the the maximum the option here, employees would be managing no, their own time cards. I didn't mean. <coughs> Does the software have the ability to do the stuff the rec committee wanted, but collecting money for classes? It, and it doesn't. Uh, this software doesn't provide the ability to collect money. Although uh, I have a different topic, but I have gone back to Civic Plus, and uh, I believe we can put a button for recreational. Um, charges and building inspection charges, that type of thing, um, on our existing website without having to purchase new software. Um, they seem to think they could handle that. Um, they, they may charge us for uh, input devices if you want. Uh, if you want uh, Karen to have a Parks and Rec uh, card reader. Well, that's the police, I think, are looking for a card reader. For mm -hmm. uh, you can certainly do it for police fees. They even have a setup for fines and that type of thing they can run as well. Um, and again, uh, the primary cost to that would be uh, the device at a location. And if you don't want a device, you don't need it, you can input it directly on the screen for the software. Um, the primary kickback I've been getting uh, to adding those uh, buttons has been uh, the financial officer's concerns about accounting, particularly breaking out batch accounting. Um, and I have been working a little bit with Linda, who believes she has cracked the code to actually print reports that break down the batching for finance. And I think if we can get through that, um, okay. we can move pretty quickly and inexpensively with regard to being able to accept plastic. Okay. And I assume you passed this by the department heads that are affected. I have not. This is the first um, first look. I wanted to show the board first, and okay. it looks fine. I, there's absolutely no interest in doing it. I will park it, but uh, I would. I'm interested. Is this the thing that I'm having? My thrifty side. You know, we paid fifty, sixty thousand dollars, but eight years ago, and now we're yep. looking to pay what thirty something. No. no, about the same, 50-something for the first chair. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, you get the optional modules as well? Oh. I did. Is this, I would work with them to see if we could break down some of that. Basically, what I want is enhanced payroll if I move forward. Um, okay. We don't necessarily, uh, we don't use a, a purchase uh, order and invoice approval program at this point. And then the annual is 5650? Is that yes. what I'm seeing? Yes. Plus, subject to CPI adjustments. And if you we went with MRI for the finance officer, you have to buy the software. No, you, you, the, no. the finance officer would work with whatever software you have. That's um, not the, what this says. The deal on. It says, as known, our business model was, was one that participated providing both software and finance services. Uh, oh, it was. I know that they will uh, do the contract uh, without us purchasing the software. Oh, okay. That's the no, way I read that. Had, had, uh, I know we use uh, the MSI and Deerfield and have contracted with them for years. And uh, the conversation I had with Christian was that started with, uh, you know, do you have someone that would be able to understand Tyler? And the answer to their question, my question was? was that nobody understands Tyler, but we have people that <laughs> can make it work. So um, it'd be nice if we could have this discussion again when Richard's back yep. for vacation. But in the meantime, if you can give us some more information. Yep, I certainly can. Because I think we, the three of us need to decide which way we want to go, which way we want to attempt to go first. Mm -hmm. um, and I understand hiring people is very difficult. And not and only what software we have when we're hiring that person will be an issue too. Okay. Well, that would be another thing. We're going to hire somebody. 
that particular person needs to have some kind of input in terms of what we're using. Right. So if they say, if we're going to change and they, and they, yeah. Well, if we go with proposal two or option number two, um, we would have to find somebody that's different than a finance officer. So that's a different kind of position. So. Okay. I just um, wanted to bring it to the forefront because December will be here next week. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> um, Next thing I had, you had a bunch of questions about the um, fiscal year 22 uh, budget last yep. last uh, meeting. I don't have the actual finalized report at this point. Joanne has about fifteen to sixteen hundred dollars uh, she believes left of invoices uh, that need oh, to be okay. put back on fiscal year 22. But in regard to the specific budget questions you had. Yep. Um, the first one, uh, and these were primarily in my department, although this one is town clerk, um, the election assistant line, $300 uh, had not been spent, and this uh, was for the assistant moderator, and in actuality, when I looked at that uh, with Linda, it appears that the assistant moderator was paid out of the supervisors of the checklist uh, line, which is one That's digit 300. different, and is $300 over budget. Whereas the election so can assistant we is fix that, or uh, Joanne is fixing that. Okay, yeah. and when I uh, will be able to run a, a new uh, town-wide budget to actual and send that to you midweek. Okay. Um, next up under uh, financial administration line five sixty one, this was training. Um, as I suspected, uh, this was also one digit off the. Um, okay our dues and subscription line and the New Hampshire Municipal Association dues of over $4,000 have been putting the training line. Um, the New Hampshire Municipal Association dues have also gone up a little bit. Okay. Um, next I had the financial administration line 605 postage. Uh, this was overdue uh, based primarily on when we purchased postage. Uh, we buy it in increments as we run out. Uh, we made a large purchase in June to cover the tax bills okay. and May to cover the tax bills. Um, and that's what threw that over. Uh, we've also had two postage increases. The last postage increase didn't affect much because it started July 10th, but the one in 2021 uh, before that did. So <coughs> in the current fiscal year, the postage is not going to be it's so likely to be tight. Oh, okay. All right. Um, financial administration line 750, new equipment. Um, and I was trying to make that into computers. It is not computers. It is the 4K camera that's hanging on the ceiling. Okay. Um, which, uh, the projector? Yep. Okay. It was a little over $5,000. that knocked us yeah. into the hole there. Um, financial administration 334 software support. This was primarily software uh, software upgrades and labor on new computers that uh, we ended up buying. The assessing computer in particular died and was uh, 2013 vintage uh, with 2013 vintage software, um, much of which needed to be replaced. Uh, we also did the accounting assistance computer. Uh, similar vein, uh, it just it couldn't stay online and uh, didn't have the processing power to keep up with much of what Liz was doing. Okay. And we had a similar situation in the fire department where uh, I think that was actually a 2011 or 2012 uh, vintage okay. machine that had to be revamped. Um, daily building rent, this being the second year, and this is somewhat of an accounting thing, but Joanne was explaining to me that the way you funded the daily building rent for the first year uh, left $15,000 um, going into the new year, um, and that's that's why there's, uh, I'm, it's 15000 or 35000 but uh, that's why there was 15000 unexpended this year. It's not that we skipped three months of rent, it was the way the contract was written and the way it was funded when it started in 2021. Okay. Um, the $7,000 uh, that should, was supposed to be transferred to the Conservation Commission has been transferred to the Conservation Commission and that is, was correct in the budget last week. 
the eleven thousand uh, dollars left over in the insurance line, the property and casualty insurance line, is the credit we received uh, on the prior fiscal year last year. Much like uh, I told you at the last meeting, we've got an eighty-nine hundred dollar credit going into this year, okay. and that is hit or miss depending on uh, what happens with the workers' comp pool and mm -hmm. what happens with loss rating. Um, uh, there was forty-one thousand dollars for hazard pay. This was an off-the-books account uh, that was going to be refunded by uh, ARPA expenditures. It had to be included in the budget for payroll purposes, but will be offset by revenue. So, exact amount. So, yeah, okay. and Joanne is going to do a journal entry change for that. And okay. Make sure it's visible. Yep. Um, and the last thing, the health insurance uh, balance uh, is sixty-three thousand dollars. And we budget um, you know, for a, a target amount based on employees we expect we'll have. Uh, typically, what happens is you get that you get that excess from either people uh, not opting to take family plans, taking the buyout, or usually fire and police positions going unfilled for periods of time, which generate the increase. Okay, and that was what I had in regard to the budget so that balance budget balance of 141 should go up yes it should okay all right Thanks, it was corrected thank you and under miscellaneous I have something in mind when I walked in the room and it's gone at this point so <laughs> All right, you can come back to it if you'd like. Yeah. That's pretty much it for me. All right, uh, consent agenda, anything in there you want to pull? I do not have anything. All right, I move to accept the consent agenda as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? No, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, motion passes. signing my life away um, I was gone too darn it um, could you ask the <coughs> Department of Public <coughs> just a minute Department of Public Works director if he can have the flagpole that's in front of the old town hall painted Starting to look kind of scraggly. Okay. I remember the last I, time. I think he was already working on that. That's oh, one, yes. of the, one of the things they were going to do when they got the bucket truck. Yep. Well, there's a sneaky way to do that, though. Just slide it on. Well, no, the, you, there's two pins in it. You take out one pin, and Randy used to use the loader to lower it. Oh, really? And then you can. Oh, paint I wonder if Steve goes out. <laughs> I'll talk to him tomorrow about it. Pin well, probably hasn't been out for 100 years. Right. <laughs> Well, Randy's not that old. <laughs> yes, Randy's not that old. But yeah, it would be uh, great if you could paint that. I was driving by the other day and I noticed it. Um, and I, just, I mentioned it to Bill a few weeks ago when he said that they were talking about it. Okay, thank you. So, Denise, this stuff from the people's has a notary next to it. I guess we thought we were going to get away with those nice short forms they sent us, and as soon as we returned the short forms, they sent that. Oh, Thank you. 
the section in the agenda where we talk about how to the cost of What is this? 73. Yeah. She had cancer of the lower spine. Discussion. No. Uh, Rebecca Hawthorne. Yes. Scott Bugby. Yes. Motion passes. Ooh. I don't know who this person is. Who met her? The 
there's so many for that particular person. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a good group. It's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. um, did you put any deadline on that? I don't think Yeah, it's gone by. I did put a deadline. Okay. Would you um, scan those and send them to the three of us mm -hmm. so we can contemplate them for the next meeting? Uh, and can you put that on the agenda for the next meeting that we will have a discreet discussion? Mm -hmm. And then we'll have to plan. We previously done it at the volunteer dinner, but we're not having that, so we'll have to find like a real event, maybe. I thought we were having a potluck. We were well, a uh, an official thing that we used to have. But yeah, you can have that. But we talked about the potluck. We talked about the potluck. We talked about cupcakes. Ooh, were the cupcakes mentioned? They, yes. were, they were mentioned. Okay. Right. We had a theme. So maybe we can find, maybe if you guys could, you you and her, she, guys, it's not really a... Y'all. Y'all. If y'all will take a look and see what kind of dates maybe we could do something. Mm -hmm. You also need time to do the plaque stuff mm -hmm. that Denise does with the, what is it, Tuts. Mm -hmm. Tuts in Rochester. We didn't have anybody that was emeritus, though. I didn't see anyone else. Because previously we've had a volunteer of the year, and then we've also considered um, somebody who's given years and years and years of service as a kind of an emeritus person. We don't have to. But that is no longer giving service, or just or someone who's is, very long term? Yeah, so somebody that's given service and continues to give service, or is done giving service. There's one person on that list that might be helpful. So, but that's a conversation we can have. So, okay. so we might be getting one black, maybe two. So. I know where Tusk is now. So. <laughs> you do. It's very hard to get to. It is. It's hard to get out of too. So, go there when there's snow on the ground. That's problematic. I picked up the plaque for was it Karen? Mm -hmm. Who was at a meeting off site and suddenly realized that she needed the plaque immediately. So, mm -hmm. did you go in the back door or the front door? I went in the back door, which I always <laughs> go in the back door too because that's the quickest way to get in there. there so, this what? I didn't know there was a front door. Oh, yeah. I yeah, when you get to the office, you realize, oh, there's a parking area in the front door. <laughs> yeah. Oh, then. I was thinking about getting my hair cut, so I went in the back door to see how busy it was. Yeah, you just take, take a little left there, and you're all set. So. I've never been to this place. <laughs> Would you like to go? It's I feel cool. like I feel like I'm, I've been left out of something. You need this, to experience going on. He's a little bit laid back, but he seems to do the work. So, and so. Uh, well, you let me know. He's a lot laid back. Yes, you know, I'm, you know, I'm giving him more credit than he deserves. So maybe I'll, we all set. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes.